third phase. Third phase moon, Blake Cousins here. We're going to go over, uh, you know, new news, breaking news. It was said today, Snowden spoke to Mel DeGrasse about aliens and why we might not be hearing from them at the moment. We're going to be speaking with Dr. J, radiolive.com. Dr. J's here. We got Preston Dennett, author of 17 books. He's also here. And Ryan Downey. We're going to be going over incredible information also about CERN. September 23rd, 2015. What's going down? It's going to be a crazy show tonight. Hang on. The first one being Snowden spoke to Neil deGrasse Tyson about aliens trying to contact us. Blake, what is it that he said to, to Neil deGrasse? Well, it's what he didn't say is what surprises me the most. And I was hoping if the alien agenda was going to be brought up in this conversation, I knew right away that Neil deGrasse is not a believer of aliens visiting planet Earth. So right away, that's a big red flag for me. So is Snowden doing what he does best in his own sense? Because he worked for the NSA. He knows how to keep secrets and could maybe he might be working for the Russians now and they might be telling him what to say in regards to is ET communicating with humans? Obviously they are. He says, well, wow, maybe we're not understanding what they're saying because they have an encryption. Well, he's a master of encryption. So that's kind of where my head's at on this Snowden breaking news. Well, I'm actually really glad you said that real quick about the Russians, because remember, when he went to Russia, part of the deal was that he couldn't release any more information on the surveillance. So you're right. Is what is, is he not telling us? Preston, what do you think of the fact that he actually talked about aliens this is the first time i've ever heard the word aliens coming out of the word of snowden's mouth right well i was waiting for it to come for sure because uh we know there's stuff out there and uh you know it's it's hard to say because uh leaks like this are i think pretty controlled even in snowden's case um which he seems to be sort of a renegade but i'm not sure if that's really what we're dealing with here um i think the information we're getting is very controlled and as far as you know, aliens encrypting messages. Well, you know, they have all kinds of ways of communicating with us through, you know, everything from radios and cell phones and not just radio signals, but uh, if they have a message they're going to transmit, um, I don't think they're going to have a, you know, if they want to hide something from us, that's certainly not a problem. Um, they're very much in control of the whole situation, um, I think, more than even our government. Hey, guys, I got a quote here. Uh, this is a direct email. I, I spoke to Seth Shostak today. He runs the SETI Institute, the Center for, in, Center for Investigation for Extraterrestrial Life, I believe, SETI, right? And this is what he said. I, I sent him the article. Snowden says aliens could be trying to get in touch right now. And this is his response. Well, this article is kind of silly, but I'm to be a speaker on a three-day cruise in November that will also include Mr. Snowden. So maybe I can find out what he was really trying to say. Simply appealing to encryption shows he doesn't really understand how SETI works. Cheers, Seth. I'm really interested in that. Well, um, wait, hold on. That's the, here we go again. So this guy, Seth, over there at the SETI Institute, do we trust this guy? No way do I trust what SETI has to say. He just said it in a statement about Snowden. Ellen's trying to communicate with humans on planet Earth. If they wanted to try... They don't need to try. They already have and are doing it right now. That's right. I, Preston, for th three decades, I was uncovered that not only have they been visiting us for uh, years, not just three decades, not just three centuries, not just three millennia, but according to Linda Moulton Howe, they've been terraforming Earth for 270 million years to get to us, to Homo sapiens being us. And apparently, according to Linda, the last fireball to kill off the dinosaurs was by them. The, la the Noah's flood, the giant flood to kill off Neanderthal and Homo erectus was to get Homo sapien off. You know, what do you guys think about that? But, Ryan, what do you think about that? Well, I was just thinking about the idea. It's so hard to prove a negative. You know, you can't prove that aliens aren't trying to communicate because the only evidence we've got is that we haven't heard from aliens. Yeah, well, I agree with what Blake is saying, that uh, they've been doing it for a long, long time and, is, and uh, are very much, you know, as I said earlier, 
um, involved with humans in a very intimate way. So yeah, they're communicating with all kinds of people from the government level all the way down to the grassroots level. They're, and like you said, they've been controlling us for a very long time. We're kind of their experiment. I mean, if you're going to be honest, uh, they've been very much intervening in our lives for a very, very long time. This is, um, hey, Preston, how's it going? It's uh, Blake Cousins. Appreciate it. Um, you know what? I want to ask you a question, Preston, about this. You know, right here at Third Phase, like John was saying, we, we get a lot of contacts from around the world. We kind of have a pulse on what's going on, it seems. Well, right. it's not what it seems. It seems like we got the pulse. And one of the pulses we've been having for about a month and a half now is this September thing coming up. September 23rd. Have you gotten any kind of you know, info from people, just friends from around the world talking about this? Yeah, I've heard about it. I've heard, you know, several different versions. There's going to be an economic collapse was one that I heard. Another was that uh, Nibiru, you know, that the, uh, you know, twin star or whatever. It is. I think Planet I've gotten Planet. about maybe 30 photos of Nibiru over the right. past couple of days just from all over the world. It's, and, uh, you know, I'm skeptical is, of doomsday I scenarios. I can't help it because they I've seen so many come and go. This started right when I got into UFO research. This sort of thing would happen, and then it would pass, and then it would happen, and then it would pass. So I don't know quite what to think of all of this, um, but yeah, I have heard of it. And honestly, there, I am a little nervous about the way things are going with society in general. I mean, with you know, the wars and the economy and so on. So I. I, w I want to get Ryan's takes on this, but let me throw in one thing about the doomsday scenarios. You're absolutely right. We're, we're, we are at a pinnacle right now with the, the finances. I mean, the banking system is out of control. Just a click of a button and we're all screwed in essence and, all, and everything. But the doomsday scenarios go back forever. Uh, literally, not just to the time of Christ 2,000 years ago, but in 1666, there was a great fire in London. If you were in the center of London, you couldn't see out except fires around you. What did you think was happening when in the year ended 1666? Well, you saw it was 666 and you're, the world was burning around you. To you, it was the end of the world. So, Brian, what do you think about that this CERN reactor could cause the collapse or the financial meltdown or, or you know, maybe final visit visitation, whatever it may be that everybody's talking about? Well, it just reminds me a lot of when we were looking at 2012. You know, there were some people saying, this is going to be the end of the world. Some people were saying it's going to be a spiritual awakening. You know, but there's going to be something. And like uh, I believe it was Preston was saying, it came and went. Uh, so sometimes I think that people are fueling, you know, fueling the conversation just to, uh, you know, build audience or something like that. You know, what, uh, Ryan, that's a, absolutely, I, I totally concur with that statement. And what I'm just saying here is that the scientists at CERN themselves are saying that they don't know what's going to happen, that they're trying to create or open up multidimensional states, that they're trying to figure out what was the Big Bang and maybe even make many black holes. And they don't even know what's going to happen. So these guys are in charge, and they're in charge of the most powerful machine ever created by man that we know of. And they're doing these experiments, and they don't know what's going to happen. So well, uh, let, me, let me jump in and say one thing. They've been successful at making back black holes. The problem is they can't sustain them long enough. You know, that, that, they've, they've already done that. They've already been able to smash the particles. They want to sustain it is a big question. And maybe they, Thank you. That's, yes. There's some scary thoughts. But, yeah, maybe on September 23rd, 2015, it might come and go. But with all the chatter was going on, maybe something is going to go down. But, hey, we might as well as not have heard about it because that's what they do. They hide a lot of stuff. So we might not never know what happens on September 23rd except a normal day. Right. And then so not to mention the next day the Pope's coming to visit and a lot of chatter that that's also going to bring some end of the world scenario of what he's going to announce. I mean, that's the chatter that I've been hearing. It might be the end of someone's world. He's, he's been making a lot of people mad in the, in the U.S., a lot of conservatives. Maybe, maybe he's going to say he's gay. Well, <laughs> I'd like to hear him they, say something about UFOs, um, which would be, you know, very interesting. 
Well, the Vatican's definitely been setting up for UFO disclosure for a long time. If anyone has been, if any one religion has been putting things out there more than anyone, it's them. First of all, they have the world's largest telescope, and its name is Lucifer. It's actually Lucifer is is an acronym. But why would they name it <laughs> Lucifer? That's that's one thing. And, and they just they they keep releasing stuff, uh, you know, from the actual Vatican about about ETs for the last few years. So they you're have absolutely to know right. the truth. I mean if they're sitting on all that wealth and knowledge, they have to know the truth of what's really going on in this situation well, as far as not only UFOs but the whole economic well, system and who's controlling the world and so on, because they're a part of it. Well, let me ask you guys this, and Blake, maybe you've seen some footage of this. I've actually heard, uh, there was a, a episode of that alien, unsealed alien files, Vatican UFOs, and they showed pictures of apparently an ET that's buried deep in the catacombs with the Pope going back to the seventh century. So apparently they live there, some of they just as they live in underground bases such as Dulce, New Mexico. Well, you know, Blake? yeah, uh, Dr. J, you know, I'm just thinking about the CERN thing and going back to it again real quickly is why do they have the the statue of Shiva out in front? And, <laughs> you know, it yeah. represents, what does it represent? The destroyer of universes. Is this a wink wink kind of thing? Is this some kind of sick joke? You would have thought they would have put something else in front of as a reason. They destroy atoms, so maybe at, maybe they are destroying universes that are within atoms, that uh, universes and civilizations that we don't even know about, and they're annihilating them. As an well, let me, let me, you never know. Let me let me bring this around full circle back to Snowden, and this goes back to what he said. Speaking of end times, obviously this U.S. surveillance on the world is, is enormous. In that movie, Citizen Four. Snowden revealed, or they revealed, that at any given time, there are 1.2 million people on the watch list, meaning fully watched, watched at any level from every monitor to, to you know, to every position, to every camera, as opposed to the whole world being recorded through metadata. If that's happening already, what is going on with this electronic equipment? Because I have a friend, actually, Blake, you know him, Joe Kiernan, when... The TV switched from analog to digital. He bought a second box for his home, and he opened it. Inside is a camera and a microphone. 2007, David Petraeus, or 2010, one of the years. I, I, I don't have the article in front of me. He is quoted as saying, we now have the capability to turn on your recording device on your, on your um, laptop or your smartphone without you knowing about it. Can you imagine that they're watching you right now, recording it, and you not knowing about it? I mean, couldn't that be something that is leading us to the end of the world? Or the beginning of a new world, too. That's what I'm thinking. Once, I think that's, Once yes. you connect the planet as one, and you get to share it at the light speed of light to the world, the world will be enlightened, and this is prophecy in its own sense, but prophecy maybe not from Jesus or God or whatever, but it makes a lot of sense that we will see it all as one when the second coming comes, enlightenment, whatever it is, I believe it's alien involvement. But hey, maybe this technology is a good thing, and maybe not so much for the end of the world. Preston, what, are we being spied on right now? Obviously we are. What do you think? Oh, I have no doubt about it. I have no doubt about it. From the beginning when I started doing this UFO research, my UFO mail would come back opened. I've had phone problems and email problems from the beginning and continuing to the present day. I have no doubt about it. I've heard that. And I've done some research into this. The, the little game Angry Birds is actually just a global tracking device. That's its real purpose. Um, so it just it's it's very pervasive it goes very deep it's very bad news in a lot of ways i think um to the level that we're being spied on absolutely i think i don't think people have realize how bad it really is um what the end result is going to be is i think like you said like going to kind of be the reverse of what they wanted it's bringing us all together that's an information age um and uh i don't know but stuff is going to go down um, this can't go on the way it is. Well, we, you know what I'm wondering is, you know, there are so many people who are concerned about privacy issues, and yet 
people can't stop buying smartphones, you know, with GPSs in them. And, you know, they keep buying these systems like the Amazon Echo or the Xbox One. I, I laugh when people say, what will you do is you say, Xbox, stop listening. And then it doesn't listen anymore. And I say, well, then how does it know to come back on? Or, oh, well, you tell it to start listening. I said, well, then it's <laughs> listening all the time. <laughs> I mean, and like, you know, I, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not concerned, you know, that people are listening to me at this point. But the thing is, if you know that there's a recording device always in your home, it's just waiting for you to say start listening. I mean, <laughs> then I mean, somebody could get on the other side of it. I mean, how how hard could it possibly be? Right. You well, know, because we we've already, we've already had people like you know hackers that got onto girls' webcams and sold their pictures and you know and things like that. And these were just nobodies. Right. You know, they computer have buzzwords. You, when, well, when the word UFO comes up, that's a buzzword or things like this. And then they start re, you know paying attention to that because I obviously can't listen to every darn phone call out there. You guys are absolutely right, but let me close this out or at least say this, and I want to get everyone's final thoughts on this. The way Snowden basically described it is is it's not so much that you have someone on the other end listening to all three of us talk right now and the, what the YouTube viewers are seeing right now as, as we're recording this. It's that the moment we picked up this phone conversation or this, this conversation that we're being recorded, this data like speech recognition software has been typed up and every single one of your emails has been cross-checked with text messages with friends and, and, and the world. It's linked up with the world. That is what's happening on a global scale with 7 billion people who are on the internet or smartphones or whatever. That is how they're monitoring. It's supercomputers with bases, uh, NSA bases all around the world, like the biggest one, it, it, the biggest one, the most sophisticated one, codenamed Echelon in the UK. Uh, I'd love to get you guys' final thoughts on that and, and any of these stories. Let's start with Ryan and work our way to the third phase of the moon. Okay, so... um. I think that it would make sense that there might be software that could do that. It, you know, I've, I know that there's libraries of information, you know, that people are sort of unaccounted for. You know, I've, I've seen just, you know, regular news stories, not even anything underground, where people were talking about listening to conversations of people overseas, listening to husbands and wives, you know, just things like that, and... They actually felt kind of bad, kind of, you know, about listening to all the conversations. But, you know, I'm wondering if people look at this and say, well, you know, what if someone's trying to go blow up another building? Well, don't we want to know? I mean, the things like that. It, it, but, you know, people turn over a lot of their own privacy for the, for the feeling of safety. And Preston? Um, what do you say? Well, you know, I, privacy is really an illusion um, from a spiritual level. Um, we're all very much connected as one. So at some point, if we were all truly an honest society, there would be no reason for any of this. Um, and I think that's what we're going to move towards. But right now we're at this critical point where this, there's this section of society who's spying on us and uh, looking for power. And uh, I think we're they're crumbling and there's a new age coming and I'm just not sure how it's going to go down. Um, so I think it's a Blake. very interesting time to, yeah. See, Blake, what yeah. do you think? Yeah, very interesting. Well said, uh, both Ryan and Preston. You know what's interesting as well is, is that fact, there's been over 130 billion souls that have lived on this planet since the beginning of mankind. So we're here now because of that. And in real time, we're living in a situation that is the epitome of what humankind can do over 130 billion souls so the big question is are we going to wake up are we going to understand that hey this division and this divide is a waste of time this invasion of privacy is going nowhere except giving the big boys power and that's not going anywhere so what we need to do is band together as humankind after 130 Again, 130 billion souls. It's important. Dr. J, Preston, Ryan, everybody, thanks. I, I got to post this up on Third Phase of Moon. It's quite incredible. You could continue this situation. This is Blake Cousins. We'll see everybody again next time.